Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where today you join me to experience and go for my first drive in the new Polestar 1. Now last year I jumped in shotgun for a passenger ride up the famous hill climb at the Goodwood Festival of Speed and it gave the impression that it had rather cracked future tech. Well today we're going to find out all about it. I'll explain the powertrain of the car, show you the ins and outs and of course take it for a drive both on some lovely German countryside roads and also on the de restricted autobahn to see what the car is like and to give you some feedback on my first time behind the wheel. So let's do this then and check out the new Polestar 1. The car that we have here then is the very appropriately named Polestar 1. It is the first production car to come from Polestar. They've also shown the two and in the future you can guess we'll have the likes of the three and the four. But this is a car that offers both 600 horsepower and 1000 newton meters of torque along with 150 kilometers of full electric range. It's a grand touring coupe. It also has this hybrid setup which is a particularly confusing powertrain. But let me try and explain a little bit of what this actually has that makes it all work. So up front, you have a two-litre four-cylinder engine that is both turbocharged and supercharged, the engine from the T8 version of the XC90, but that's also combined with an ISG, an electric motor, attached to the engine up front. Then at the rear, you also have an additional two electric motors offering direct power and torque vectoring to the rear axle, and the ability, of course, to put down the power very quickly, thanks to having a 34-kilowatt battery set up to give you, well, all of that electric range as well. So what we're talking is three 336 horsepower from the combustion engine plus 46 horsepower from the ISG and at the rear the 218 extra horsepower and a combined total of a thousand newton meters. That means this car has quite a lot of go but what's particularly interesting is the way that's integrated and that's what I'm going to experience when I'm actually driving and showing you through the different driving modes. So to walk around the car from the exterior we've got this lovely satin grey uh, paintwork of the car but starting right up towards the very front this is the Polestar grid style grill. This is is something that's going to develop through future versions. Of course, Polestar are thinking ahead, they're thinking full electrification, they're thinking full autonomous driving, and this is about creating a display or a style that can be developed on to also include various sensors, cameras, detectors, and the things that will be required for that. Coming around, of course, you've got some openings for cooling. Much of the bodywork is made from carbon fiber to try and keep that as lightweight as possible. Overall, though, with the combustion engine and the battery packs and the electric motors, we are talking 2,350 kilos of weight which is by no means on the featherweight side of things but coming around like I said this Polestar 1 is a verification prototype you can see the numbers written just there we've got some lovely large wheels on the car it's got developed uh, brakes with Akebono if we keep coming around towards the rear just to show you the back angle of the car and you will detect some similarities in the design with Volvo of course Polestar coming and working as part of the Volvo I suppose umbrella this car is built in Gothenburg out in Sweden but they've recently opened uh, and inaugurated the plant in Chengdu in China where the cars are going to be built and they're only going to be building 500 cars per year and there will only be a total of one and a half thousand Polestar 1s in total which actually makes this car about as rare as say my Ford GT there are about that many of those that are going to be built in total as well which is moderately interesting anyway if we come through I'll show you the key quickly this is the key the kind of cube that I have here which has a few buttons if you press the uh, unlock button pops out the door handles. I can show you the interior of the car. And this car does have a big red emergency stop button being a prototype vehicle. But we've got a digital display. We've got the uh, central screen as well, which is all waking up now. And we will go through all of this in much more detail later on. But you've got some carbon fiber inlays, some comfortable seats. There's a, an amount of seating area in the back, maybe more towards a plus, uh, a two plus two, you could say. Glass panoramic roof. And then if I take a step inside, of course, normally, when I climb in a car and head to the start stop button, it's to bring it into life. But with this, when you do start it, that's that's kind of it. It's turned on and ignore any messages because like I said, prototype vehicle. But basically, drive mode wise, you start up in hybrid. You can go into pure all wheel drive, individual where you can set it yourself or power if you want the engine on. But to actually, I guess, bring the engine into life, we need to cycle the drive mode into power and you can hear it coming into life but we'll be I think we'll be starting off actually probably in pure to go with the electric side of things and um, learn all about this before coming back to run you through more of the system and software later on 
on the move then. And this is where you always have that eerie kind of electrical almost silence. I haven't spent too much time driving in hybrids, but driving this car in hybrid mode effectively actually means you're kind of always in electric. With a real world electric range of 120, 130 kilometers or so, that is more than enough for pretty much everyone's daily commute. So if you plug it in every night, charge it up, you would barely actually ever be running the combustion engine. Now in hybrid mode, it will kick into life in one of three different circumstances. Either if it starts to get low on battery power, then it will charge it up by running a combustion engine. Or if you give, let's say, a firm press on the throttle pedal, it will kick it into life to give you the extra power. Or alternatively, if you're going at 160 kilometers per hour or faster, it will kick it in as well. So hopefully we'll experience that on the German autobahns. But driving like this, you have that kind of eerie silence, but I'd say one of the first things that the car does is it actually quite well disguises its weight. Like I said, 2,350 kilos is not exactly a light car, but you don't really realise it when you're driving along. What you can do though is go to the drive mode selector, which is where I'm then going to scroll it down to power for sporty driving, select to engage, it's basically fired the motor into life, and I've also got some paddles on the back of the steering wheel to drop down some gears where on the lovely twisty roads that we have just in front of us, we'll be able to enjoy and hear some of that. So it's a four cylinder engine, which is quite an unusual sound, of course, for a sporty drive. But then with 600 horsepower and a thousand newton meters of torque, it's actually able to get a move on pretty well. And going around a tighter corner, it also manages to hold the car rather flat, or certainly more flat than you'd necessarily expect from this kind of car. The other thing it does is when you're actually sitting inside the car, you've got a good sense of where everything is. The, the kind of feel and buttons and controls are all very natural. Heading back uphill then, we've got some slightly more twisty roads that we're going to experience as well. And that's where there's going to be an opportunity to discover more of the torque vectoring. But this is where the car, where you can hear the four-cylinder, I guess almost rasp from it. But this is the thing, the car has these two different characters. The one side of it where you can drive it and use these immense amounts of power. And the other where you can comfortably cruise and daily use the car all on electric. So we're going to head to a road in a second where it really starts to get twisty. But by using torque vectoring and by having two completely independent motors on the rear axle. That's where if you think about it, one can be running 100% while the other is zero, which gives it this push and propulsion around the corner, helping with performance, helping with comfort, helping with confidence and making it a more sporty drive. But this is where the car in this environment at least is certainly proving to be quite a fun drive. I'm shifting manually, you might have noticed as well, uh, with the shifters on the back of the uh, on the back of the steering wheel. We get an opportunity in a second to put my foot down as we head up this road, uphill, always making for a good fun drive. Yeah, that's where you feel it, and there is a lot of power. Then we've got some tighter corners, keep my hands in one position, one position on the wheel. The steering is something I'm still getting slightly used to, but up here, instant torque. The way you go, it just picks up very, very quickly. And in power mode, I'm noticing that the charge is, of course, building, regenerating. You have regenerative braking as well. And you actually have two different drive modes. So we're in D. You can also put the car into B, which is where it will more heavily brake. And that's going to be more relevant and more at play as we come back down the hill, where the car will literally use the motors to, to build up charge and to control the speed as well around some of these twistier corners. And actually, we're going up at such a rate that my ears are starting to pop as well. But hey, enjoying it as we go for this little drive. I'm going to pull into the car park just on the side here in order to actually turn around and come back down the hill to demonstrate this. But it's a very gentle car when you just cruise like this. And the sound is not loud. The sound is not intrusive. Um, it's a little rasp, I would say, that you know, you know it's there and you get the feel of going up towards the red line, it's still a petrol engine, but it's also the thing, just thinking about this, the turbo and supercharged nature of it, it's something that I can't quite get my head around at this moment. Um, we're coming back down the hill, this is where even though we're cruising downhill in third gear, the speed is actually slowing, the car is controlling itself through the corner and it will be building up the charge as we go as well. And I'm, I'm really intrigued by this incorporation of the hybrid element because most cars that are hybrids offer you a very small amount of range whereas this is you could just always drive it in electric and if I go back actually into well let's go into pure mode just for the moment to be fully electric engines clearly off this is where regenerative regenerative braking I struggle to say that word is actually quite I mean you can watch the speed coming down quite quickly actually and then instant torque and silence 
that's the thing that's so strange about this. Some tight corners here just to feel the car through. You can hold a decent speed around these corners without being uncomfortable. And by having it set up like that, of course, the car's doing the majority of the work for me. It is now time to turn out onto the autobahns, but while I've been driving along a little bit more gently, the thing that is fascinating, just cruising, is how we've nearly got a completely charged up battery. That's happened seamlessly in the background, just, well, without really even needing to think about it too much. It's fully charged up. It is late in the afternoon, and I can see the roads are a little bit busy. And this is where we can actually go into power mode. Oh, we've gone into individual, but we'll go straight into power for the sporty driving settings. And hopefully, hopefully it's going to clear up a little bit so that we can actually use some of the power that is available to us in this car to get an experience, but it is really busy. It's hard to even move lanes here at the moment with how much traffic there is. That is just my luck, always, to find busy autobahns when I'm hoping to get an empty stretch. But just cruising, so if I go into the uh, main menu, which you do like this on the screen, you can turn on lane keeping aid, just make life a little bit more gentle and cruise. I mean, at 125 kilometers an hour, even with the engine running in the background, it's still very, very soft. And actually, given how busy it is, I'm gonna pop the car straight back into hybrid just because I want to drive it uh, as silently as possible. I'm just, yeah, there we go. Basically silence. If you're hearing any noise at the moment, this is pre-development car, remember, prototype vehicle, still some things being done before the final customer cars. But just that instant, there we go. When you put your foot down, you can hear the engine firing into life. But the instant kind of feel from it, and if we go into pure, just so I can put my foot down completely, there we go, the dashboard dials change. Foot down completely, no noise at all, no combustion engine running, just pure electric driving and cruising. And as I said, this could be your commute to work. You get home, plug the car in, and you're never going to burn any fuel. The combustion engine will never need to run or do anything. Um, and if it did open up in front, we'd be able to put the foot down a little bit further. Maybe we can get an opportunity if the guy in front was kind enough to move, but no, nope. lane discipline, a little bit out of the window, unfortunately, so no opportunity there. Um, to go above 160, that's where we would then get the engine kicking in. Hopefully, the other direction is going to be a touch better. So heading out onto the autobahn then in pure mode, in full electric. Um, let's see if we manage to find a little gap to experience. Well, firstly, some of the acceleration in electric alone. Here we go, this is where the numbers are rising, 100 kilometers an hour, 110, 120, 130. Oh, I mean, it's picking up. Yeah, okay, it's not the fastest thing in the world, but then this isn't anything like all of the power. And then we're at 150. 160, there we go. Now the combustion engine should come in. We should start, there we go, and start to feel the power. And that's where it picks up with absolute ease. We pass some traffic, so backing off just a touch. For 200 miles an hour, cruising, gentle, easily. 230, 240, and 250. And there we go, that's me, Max. Onto the brakes, we've got some big, big brakes, the Akibono brakes. We're 250, 251, 252. That is basically VMAX in the Polestar 1. And of course, it's a, I guess, hard limiter. You can accelerate the car, would be able to go substantially faster, but the general agreement between different manufacturers is, is to keep it a little bit sensible. Um, and cruised along, and at that speed, it's still fairly quiet, it's still fairly comfortable. Um, not too dramatic, not too kind of sweaty palm feeling like you're on the edge of edge of anything sensible. And you could drive like this for a fairly long distance. Unfortunately, we do now have some trucks ahead, so we've had to slow down the pace significantly. But, yeah, I mean, just enjoying the position, enjoying the seating position's good, the visibility's good. In fact, the door mirrors are really cool because they're almost borderless, which is quite unique. I'm not familiar with that, that style of mirror. Similar story for the rear view mirror. You've got a good, good feeling inside the cabin with the glass up above you good screens in front, you have the uh, gauge of combustion engine and, and uh, motors, and obviously on the other side you have the speedometer, um, and a map up at the moment as well, and well, you know, comfortable, nice position, so it's actually gone back into hybrid, so foot down, combustion engine picking up the numbers much faster than before, I mean, easily up to just shy of 200 kilometers an hour there, 120 or so miles per hour. Back on down the down the autobahns. Just a quick 
run on the Autobahn, but I wanted to talk a little bit as well about the dampers. So this car has some Olin's dampers that underneath the bonnet you can actually adjust manually. They're not an electronic system or what you'd maybe be more familiar with, but the benefit of that is that you do actually have an incredibly smooth ride. Now I'm not joking when I say that, if you go over train tracks or bumps in the tarmac or anything like that, you don't get that clumpy clunking feeling that you often do in a modern car of this category and the ride is incredibly smooth as a result and we're actually by complete coincidence and I didn't know this in advance going to go over some train tracks here and this is what I'm talking about it just rides over them in a much more smooth way than you're normally familiar with or expecting certainly from a car that has this level of capability and with more time out on the autobahn you'd also feel that as well with the relaxing ride that you'd have at the end of the day and just the whole car seamlessly driving as one. So we're going to head just see if we can find somewhere to pull over because I'd like to show you a little bit more around the interior of the car, some of the other details, show you underneath the bonnet of course as well and just go through a well, touch more about it before we wrap things up. The really interesting thing then about this car is the integration of the technology. Exactly what I said at the beginning, the future tech and bringing it into something that's usable and understandable. A bit like how we've seen in say the Porsche 918 Spyder at the hypercar level, but in this car in a Grand Tora, in a more comfortable, uh, more luxurious vehicle, a more daily drivable vehicle. And if you just sit in here and have a look around, look at how much glass there is. The glass house is amazing. The visibility is fantastic. The rear, of, of course, not the, the largest in terms of space, but definitely impressive in terms of appearance. And the way that you have this shoulder line that runs almost the entire way around the cabin. Inside, you've again got nice materials. You've got the carbon fiber exposed on the dashboard, also over on the door cards, the Bowers and Wilkins sound system, the tweeter you can see up in the center, memory seat controls as well. And of course, all finished with leather everywhere you look. The key, there are a number of places you can tuck different things in. Um, here, for example, storage cubby holes, various pockets. This is where you, this is the unusual thing, the start toggle. That's literally how you start and stop the vehicle. And obviously, unlike having an engine, it doesn't fire into life. The drive mode, it's a case of pressing this toggle, and that's where you cycle through the different modes, all-wheel drive, pure, hybrid, or bring the power with the uh, motor coming into life. Back in there, there we go, turn that off. And um, you can always return with the button at the bottom. A few different screens and settings, and here, if you're driving in power, you can press charge, which will fully uh, maximize the charge of the battery. A few adjustments for things, camera for example, here you can see the 360 surround where you can turn on just one camera in more detail um, back to 360 view. This all works very quickly, very efficiently. Um, can't complain about that at all. Scroll down some of the options, lane keeping aid, uh, blind spot monitoring, road sign information, speed sign assist, um, all of these different buttons that just turn things on instantly. Um, collision avoidance, that's obviously where if it detects that you're going to have a, an impact with something in front of you, it slams on the brake, that prevents that from being a problem. I, there's a lot, there's a lot of safety in here, uh, as you can imagine. Um, and it all works very, very nicely going backwards and forwards um, and integrating with the system putting down the various menu, actually let's do that and go into settings. In my car, this is where you set up individual, uh, individual drive mode here for example. So you can actually have the car turning on in whichever mode you would like um, by default. So you could have it in power if you always wanted or you could have it always in fully electric should you prefer. Then you can configure some of the other characteristics as well. The amount of braking, um, use eco climate to lower energy consumption. Y you get the point, you get where all of that is going. Of course, a production car won't have a big emergency stop button. That will be able to completely close and cover up. The shifter, you do actually have to go, to go into gear, you go into like, through neutral and then into drive. You can see the symbols here. So one it forwards back into neutral and then into reverse, which is definitely taking me a moment to get used to. Um, just that you have to do two motions, but I guess it's all pretty self-explanatory. And then one toggle and it turns everything back off. So it's a nice place to be when you're on the inside of the car. The door mirrors, as I talked about, you can see how those look with that kind of borderless effect that they have. Let me come around actually and just show you inside the engine bay. I promised we would open that up. So just gonna step out. It's a little bit windy outside, but down here we have the lever. There it is, just release that. Oh, it lets us know um, on the inside. And then there's a catch just off to the center on this side, um, which he says is there. And this is a carbon fiber bonnet. Open it up on the hydraulics. 
in there of course as with many modern engines not too much you can see you get a small sense of the electrical nature of the car up front some orange bits and pieces many more of which you're going to see inside the boot in a second but also carbon fiber uh, for the intake box which is all very nice lots of the construction is carbon fiber of course it's painted in this example but these are the particularly interesting Olin's dampers where they're currently set in the middle setting but they're completely adjustable um, honestly I'm not sure if too many people would go for manual adjustment but having the option having the ability to do so is certainly an interesting thing to be offered um, and a, you know these are kind of the best in the business when it actually comes to dampers in the first place but yes that's our four cylinder engine not too much weight up front in terms of the engine but you do of course have a lot of electrical motors uh, and other things going on just drop that down and come around towards the back i'm actually just going to grab the key for a second um it won't lock itself just leaving it in but if i take it with me i can show you what I want to show you inside the boot because this is actually really cool and obviously you've got an integrated spoiler here on the top of the boot lid but if the car is unlocked and I press and hold this button it opens up and inside you are greeted with a visual representation of what is happening of course this is on display for I suppose interest purposes but in the traditional sense where you would visually go and look at an engine you can also visually look at some of the electrical connectors to do with the rear uh, motors the two motors on the rear axle i'm not entirely sure what everything is other than left and, and right of course but being able to see that is cool nonetheless and being a plug-in hybrid in this pouch you have the plug-in cables uh, to charge it uh, directly from a wall if you would prefer anyway just to close this back down for the moment remember prototype car if you're hearing any noises at any point or anything that's unusual this is not a final complete production spec those are going to be coming in the coming months literally from the plant in Chengdu but the ride considering we're on 20 one inch wheels actually really quite impressive so what do i think maybe when you're on electrical power i was expecting to feel a little bit more um i guess acceleration out of it uh, from 250 horsepower but i think that's one of the fundamental differences between a combustion engine and the way the power is delivered when you're running on both ample power ample go of course 600 horsepower a thousand newton meters it's a big number whichever way you're going to look at it the car i think looks good it's quite subtle it's not over the top it's not crazy it's not shouty in the way in its presence certainly sitting right here it looks rather smart and formal i think that fits the character of the car pretty well overall but this has been an opportunity for a first drive in the prototype Polestar 1, which is pretty special. So big thanks to the team. Hope I've been able to share a little bit of the understanding of how it all works in the different modes and settings uh, and everything to do with it. But yeah, there we go then. Thank you very much for watching as always. Appreciate your support. And I'll see you again very soon. Cheers. <laughs>